Hey everybody, so I'm doing a video, a really quick video on how to groom your Australian Shepherd. Uh, I've done one of these beforehand and I'll link it down in the description below, but I just wanted to put up a more recent version. So this is Aspen <laughs> right here. She's uh, not necessarily all that excited to get groomed, but it is something that's necessary for this kind of breed. Um, they're a double coated breed, so it's really important to uh, keep managed all of that hair. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is clean the ears. So Aspen has had some issues with dirty ears in the past. Um, she's got this kind of black buildup and unfortunately I'm not always here um, because I go to school kind of away from my parents' house and she stays with my parents as I'm going to school and then she'll come and live with me. Um, once that's done, but she has some black buildup. And so what I would recommend if you have a dog that has any sort of buildup, get a um, cotton ball or cotton pad. I would never recommend using Q-tips in a dog's ear and just get it really soaked with ear cleaner and get it in there and make sure that you get that area nice and wet. Um, a lot of the earwax is gonna be dried up in there so you just want to get it nice and wet and then we're going to move on to the other ear so just leave all of that dampness inside there that's going to help work out some of the earwax move on to the next ear and then come back to the original ear and try and clean stuff up so hopefully some stuff will get uh, more loose with the the moisture and then you can remove that stuff and then you always want to dry out the ear once you're done cleaning it because you don't want to leave any unnecessary moisture in there. So now that you've waited for a little bit, you just want to go back in with a wet um, cotton ball and she's not enjoying this. <laughs> I don't think any dog really likes to get their ear cleaned. Um, maybe some dogs, but this is going to make it much more simple to get that caked on gunk inside of the ears. And you don't want to press too hard, you don't want to ever hurt your dog, but you do want to get the ears clean. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And then once you're done, you want to take a clean cotton ball or a cotton pad and dry everything out. And then we don't have any moisture in there. It's just a nice dry ear canal. Okay, so the next thing that I normally do, <laughs> her ears are bugging her a little bit, um, I take some face cloths and I just wipe off the muzzle. I don't really like to use shampoo on the muzzle of my dog or near the eyes of my dog, so this is just a really easy um, solution for that. So we're just gonna clean you off. Sweet little one. Oh, you're so sweet, I know. Oh, does it feel so good? <laughs> Aspen, you look a little wet now. Um, all right, so now I go in with a Furminator. Now, I know that the Furminator is a bit questionable. Um, some people think that the Furminator pulls out a lot of guard hairs as well as undercoat, and so it's not the greatest option. Uh, you can also use a undercoat rake for this. I personally like the Furminator. I think if it's used properly with not too much pressure, um, that it works really well and is actually quicker than a rake, but it's up to you. So use whatever you feel comfortable. So I'm running the Furminator on my dog at the kind of speed that I would normally, and I'm just going to show you what it pulls out right here. So um, hopefully it'll actually focus in on that. But that is all undercoat. <laughs> like that is not an excessive amount of guard hairs being pulled out. So I personally feel comfortable using the Furminator, but it's completely and totally up to you if you want to use it. Um, so I usually go over for about 10 minutes or so, maybe less even. Uh, I just try and pull out any undercoat that's a little bit excessive. I don't go over too many times. You also don't want to put too much pressure on a dog, even with a undercoat rake. Um, just because both of these tools, the, the rake as well as the Furminator, can cause skin damage if you press too hard. So you just want to be careful when you use this stuff with a dog. Alright, so I've gone over with the Furminator for around 
seven minutes right now. She's not too bad. I groomed her about three weeks ago. And I'm just gonna go over her with a slicker brush now and catch any of those loosened up hairs as well as get rid of any mats. She shouldn't have too bad of mats. Here's hoping. Uh, it's been, like I said, around three weeks, so shouldn't be too bad. So I just ran over her with a slicker brush. Um, a couple of areas on an Australian Shepherd that I would recommend taking a look at is especially behind the ears. Um, so if you have any small mats, what you can do, <laughs> Aspen, can you look over there for me? She wants to give me hugs. That's what wants, what she wants to do. Oh my goodness, Appy, you're such a good girl. Yes, you are. Okay, let's show them though. This is for their Australian Shepherds too. <laughs> I'm just gonna hug her for a second here, you guys. She needs some love. <laughs> so one thing that you might wanna take a look at is right underneath each of the ears. So right here, as well as right behind here. So what you can do is just lift up the hair and slowly brush down. Let's see if we can get her to give me a hug here and you can see what I'm doing. So I'm pulling up the hair like that and then working it down. And that's gonna help you if there's any small mats to break up the mats. You just keep on going. Don't pull too hard, um, but you really do wanna check right behind the ears. Another few places that you wanna check specifically for mats is along the kind of feathery coat that's attached to the legs, as well as within the coat that's right at the hind legs. Um, there's gonna be Oftentimes there's mats in here because there's a lot of buildup of undercoat. But as I said, again, what you can do is just pull the coat up and you just slowly work your way down and release a little bit of hair at a time, work your way through the coat and that's gonna help you break up any mats or anything that you might find. Another thing that you can use if you find mats that are way too difficult to, was that a burp? Um, another thing that you can use um, to break up mats is just a pair of thinning shears. So that's what they look like right here. Um, you can find them on Amazon. I'm going to have all of the tools that I use are going to be linked down below. So if you want to check them out, if you want to get the exact same thing that I have, it's all there. So check it out. Um, these things are amazing if you've got really bad mats, mats that you're not going to be able to comb through in the fur and you just use them to work up and down the mat and that breaks it up and then you can comb it right out. But I'm not gonna use these on her because we really don't have bad mats, no. Oh my goodness. What's up with all of these hugs? Someone is just a little insecure today and needs a lot of attention and reassurance. All right, so I've brushed Aspen out and one really important thing to do is to pick up one of these combs and you can actually comb through all of the, the longer hair that you went through and check and make sure that you didn't miss any mats. So it looks like the comb is running through nicely on each side. We don't have any mats in any of the fur. This is just a good way to just double check all of your work. So because I have her bum right here, I'm gonna start working on what I call a poo tunnel. Um, this is something that is commonly used with dogs. And basically what we're gonna do is just lift up the bum and do a little shave right underneath the bum and on each side, just clearing up any hair near the region. So you wanna be really careful because this is a very sensitive area. Um, one thing that I would recommend doing always when you groom your own dog is to do just a really quick health check. Always be on the lookout for things that are different in your dog. I will have a video linked at the end of this video on how to do a quick health check that you can use while you're grooming. Um, for example, today I actually found that Aspen has a little cut right along her tail, right up there. And so I would never have known that if I had not looked while I was grooming. So I would definitely recommend keeping an eye out for anything, any health complications while you're working on your dog. Right, Abby? It's very important, yes. All right, so at this point, I just wanna um, let you guys know that in a professional grooming shop, 
you would usually take a dog that is fully void of any um, mats or anything like that and has been completely brushed out and you would bathe them and then use a special blow dryer on them to blow more undercoat out. However, Aspen, my dog, is very, very scared of the blow dryer. She has never liked it, regardless of me trying, ever since she was a puppy. And, uh, and I, I'm personally of the belief that you should always cater to your dog's needs when it comes to grooming. If there's something that they don't like, figure out a way around it. So we don't do a bath at this point. We do the full groom and then I bath her. So if you don't have a blow dryer or if your dog is scared of the blow dryer, follow along with what I'm doing. But if you do have a blow dryer and you want to use it at this point, you would bath your dog and then use the blow dryer. Okay, so we're going to continue on with the poo tunnel now. So I just cut a straight line across the hair of the bum. This is of course for a dog with a docked tail. Um, if you don't have a dog with a docked tail, then you could just take your Moser or your pair of clippers and shave along the base a little bit to clear it up. Um, but because my dog has a docked tail, and I'm going to be very careful because she has that little cut right there and I don't want to aggravate it, but I'm just going to round her tail off like that. And um, then we're going to use the thinning shears and we're just going to, I want to be very careful with that little tail there, um, just thin it out a little bit. I'm not getting anywhere near the skin, I'm just thinning out the hair that's around that tail right there. And then we're going to clear it off. I would normally brush it off, but like I said, I really want to be careful of my little baby girl's cut right there. So I'm not going to touch anywhere near that cut. And I just round it off just like that and like that. There we go. So we'll clear it all off. The cut is right up there, so I'm just going to avoid that area. Okay, so the second step to all of this is shaving all of the um, feathery, fluffy coat that is along the sides of the legs. And so what I do, and what every grooming shop that I ever worked in did, was a upside down V. So you're going to take your clippers, and you're going to run it along the midline here and then you're going to kind of work to shave a V looking shape into your dog's coat. So I'm going to keep on going with this and then I'm going to show you what it looks like once it's done. All right so we've got the poo tunnel all done so she's all um, cleaned up in the rear end area so anything that she would try and pass would really fall down unless it's super liquidy. I know that's TMI, but uh, it definitely helps you out if you have a dog that has not so nice poops sometimes. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do, since this is all done, we're gonna comb up on the little hairs that are on the back of the legs here, and then we're going to clean that area up. So we just snip off all of that, comb up again, and snip again. Just, we're trying to clean it up so that it doesn't look as messy. So the next thing that we're gonna do is a sanitary cut. So this is her back leg here and then her stomach. And so I just take a pair of clippers or a Moser and we're just going to clean up the area all along her stomach. So while you're doing this, it's really important to note that most dogs actually have a very thin um, little bit of skin right at the area where the leg meets the body. So you never want to clip in with your clippers into that area right there because there is a skin flap. So in order to avoid that, whenever you're shaving your dog, you always want to work your clippers out so that the, the um, cutting edge is moving towards you. So you're never gonna cut your dog in there if you're moving your clippers this way out because 
the skin is going to be flat and so you're, you're essentially moving it like this versus cutting into that flap. So just a, a point to keep in mind. Okay, so now we've got Aspen laying down and that's how I like to do her feet. I'm actually going to link a video um, that I made just about feet at the very end of this video and it'll help you, it'll walk you, walk you through step by step how to do a nice clean and tidy foot. So right now I'm really just gonna give you a quick overview of what I do and you can check out that video if you need any more information. So first thing I do is shave the underside of the pad. Um, so I just use a Moser for this right here. So just like that. So all of the underside of her pad is shaved. Then I take a slicker brush as well as my pair of scissors and I just comb up on the foot. Um, this is really her, her least favorite part of a groom and I find most of the dogs that I groom, it's their least favorite part ever is working on the feet. But I find if you train your dog to lay down while you're working on the foot, it's a lot easier to handle them. So we're just gonna comb up here, or brush up I guess. And then what we're gonna do is pull in between each toe hairs that are kind of hiding in there. And then we just trim over the top of the foot, just like that. And I usually do this twice, just because um, it's always good to go over twice. You never know what you missed. You might have this really weird piece of hair kind of just hanging out. So you wanna make sure that you get a nice looking foot. And I go over a little bit more slowly the second time around and just even everything out. Okay, so there we have it. So this foot is all done. Um, if you need to, you can always clip your dog's nails. Aspen tends to wear her nails down on the concrete, so I almost never have to do her nails. You can see they're actually really short right now. So I'm not gonna touch her nails, but at this point you would clip your dog's nails if you really needed to. Okay, so there you have it. Aspen is all groomed. She's all combed out. She's all scissored up and looks absolutely beautiful. And so we're gonna pop her into the tub and then let her air dry. So I hope that this was helpful. I just wanna remind you guys that this is not a show quality groom. This is just um, grooming that works for my dog. It's something to keep them comfortable and clean. And I normally do this probably, I would suggest at least once a month with your dog if you want to keep them super clean, but you can go around six months for an Australian Shepherd without grooming them if you don't mind them stinking a bit or having a lot of undercoat that's shedding in the house. But I usually do this at least once a month with my little girl. And what do you think, Aspen? Should we give you a treat? We should reward good behavior, shouldn't we? Can you sit? Sit for me, I'll get you a treat. Oh yes. <laughs> okay, so we always reward good behavior, of course. So there's her treat for doing the groom. Yes, oh, is it so good? So good. And now you wanna get off the table, don't you? All right, so I hope this was helpful for all of you and we're gonna go and bath this little girl. Take care, bye. Oh, just so cute. Let's get you off the table. Oh!